Jack-o-lantern zombie on Halloween. Awesome. Can he pick up stuff? Oh, I didn't want to put that. Well, why not? Can he pick up this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's name him right now. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Oh, I'm so glad we have one. The block strikes once again. Hello, YouTube. This is Metro de Block, and today we're going to continue our Minecraft Let's Play once again. That's right, guys. The series is back. Back, back, baby. We're going to continue to work on our single player Minecraft world once again. I'm so sorry. I failed you. I know it. I know it. I made a short episode last one to explain how I was going to try to make shorter episodes, to post more, and all of that. And I know nothing has come out yet <laughs> for a long time. I'm really sorry. I know it's my fault. I have been really busy. Really busy with real life stuff. Unplanned stuff. For the last week or so, I have had the worst headaches ever uh, happening at random times. And I just, I could not find time to record with that. It just, as soon as I was going to go get ready to record, really, something that was longer than half an hour, my head was starting to hurt, and then it was disturbing the recording and all of that, so I blame the headaches. <laughs> But they're gone now. They're gone. And uh, I'm back with another episode. Uh, lots of progress. Also, I'm never going to tell you again what's going to happen in the next episode. I tried so hard to fulfill what I said last episode. We might do the iron farm. But I'm not ready to do that yet. I realize a bunch of things I have to do before it. And the most important thing is the villager setup. Because this isn't quite ready to get us villagers uh, for the iron farm project. Also, look at this guy. I got him at Halloween. I don't think I can give a uh, jack o' lantern to a mob and he'll wear it unless he spawns with it at Halloween. So that's kind of cool. But the clip you just saw in the beginning of the video about him was made about two weeks ago. So <laughs> it's a little bit late to do something about Halloween. But we got him. I thought he would be like a cool guardian for this place. Put him, put him there or something. Maybe I thought about putting a little hole in the wall right here. And put him in there. Maybe. I am not sure. But look at what I got here. I forgot to mention last episode... Wait, was it the last episode or the episode before that that I did show this stuff? I think it was last episode. I did show all of that. That is, um, who's the name? Inventor. Inventor is a YouTuber who made the design for these things. The redstone behind him is all of his work. Uh, he made, um, he called it Compact Villager Zombie Sorter, I think, or something like that. But, um... But he did the design of this. I did not want to for you to think it was me because I want, don't want to take credit for something I didn't do. So it's not me. <laughs> I'm going to leave the link of his video in the description. But I kind of changed his design a little bit, if I could say so. Look at this. I think this is the most compact redstone I've ever done in the game. Because I took someone else's design. This is like his, his section's side by side here and I put this little thing here in the middle and it does not interfere with the two sides and it's incredible how it works but this is like let's say we had a zombie here we wanted to kill him we did it because he's not a zombie villager we just hit the button oh of course I don't have the lava in the dispenser when I want it okay let's write that again perfect and that should kill any mob without 
a lot of armor. I could add some delay if I wanted to make uh, armored mobs work too. All I would have to do is just to add another repeater right here. And it should do the trick. I don't have one with me. Um, but that is how I plan to eliminate the mobs I don't want. And once I got the zombie villager in every single of these cells. When it's all zombie villagers. I can just flick this. And it opens up the door for them to be roaming around. But what if I press this button after the gates are open? Not a problem. It caches the lava quick enough, so no spell risk is taken at any time. Well, that is kind of cool. I did that accidentally, but it worked out really well. Uh, for the gates here, there I think I'm going to have a villager somewhere in the wall over here. So all of these zombie villagers will be detecting the villager through the wall. And they won't kill me, because when they will be released, they're all just going to go on a creepy... Creepy parade or something, just like walking really slowly towards a villager and getting into. If I put a trap door over here, uh, open trap door, their AI will make it walk over and they will fall into a water stream below. And then I could bring them to a curing system because this is not where we're going to cure the zombie villagers. I have another plan for that. But also, before I go into another world to show you that, look at my level count. <laughs> 335. I need to say, I fixed the gold farm. I fixed it good. It's amazing. I'm so happy that I can use it again. Because, I don't know if you remember, but before I told you I had a problem with the Pikmin uh, losing aggro on me. And I said, you have to look up. I was really stupid. I tried since, and it didn't work. And I never talked about it or anything. I just, of rage, I just stopped using it, really. And I, one day I was like, yeah, you know what? I should fix it. So I did. And you can probably tell that. We, I AFK'd, let me think. How many days did I AFK since last episode? Maybe like five days complete spent at the gold farm to get that amount of gold. But uh, I died once. I had more levels than this. I had like 357. And I came back on my computer and I was dead. And I was out of the minecart on the bedrock below. But when I came back on, after I died, because I crashed my game too for some reason, I came back to the gold farm, the minecart was still on the track. So I don't understand how I got out of it. Well, I expect. I think it's because I'm recording. Where's the ladder? Oh, there it is. Uh, let's take a little tour of the gold farm to... Whoa show you how I fixed it and maybe help other people that have the same problem as me because I read in many um, gold farm like this videos that uh, people had the problem the same problem as I did and people suggested fixes and in impulse SV's video one person did suggest something I try this time many suggestions have been made it's your render distance it's your Version people say oh, it doesn't work in 1.8.8. Oh, you need to put it to 12 chunks exactly not 16 or else it will be too big No, 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 no. It's nothing of that. It's a really simple fix That you can do to make it work indefinitely and it's ridiculously simple how it is really All I did was I took another name tag and I captured another pigment put it right next to the first one and named it and that it was fixed. That's all I need to do. And I will show you why as soon as I get up there. Come on. Come on. I still need to pretty the farm up. And to make a proper elevator to it. Not got an arrow to do that yet. But now that I'm using it a lot, I actually have a reason to. Okay, here you go. Why is there a zombie in there with a holding a golden nugget? Okay, never mind. Um, let's go visit the pigmen. Please don't pick up my glass. Okay. Good. So this is all I did. I added another pigment. Her name is Maddie. Wait. Hey. Can I ax... Can I access you, Maddie? Yeah, Maddie. You can see it right there. Hi. What's up? <laughs> is it hot in there? <laughs> uh, well, yeah. This is 
really simple how it fixes it, actually, because all it is is that the problem was that pigment is the only one getting mad. In 1.8, a pigment can aggro another pigment just by being next to each other. If one is mad, it will transfer its aggro to another one. Basically, all that is the whole farm relays on that because these, well, this pigment is close enough to these ones that they will get aggro if I hit this one. And then these will walk all the way as I'm going with the minecart, uh, walking around here, getting these ones aggro as they pass and the whole rows in the process. And then they will all fall in these chambers, getting crushed, and all their meat and all their drops. We'll get into these chests, which are empty right now because they just emptied of, of all the gold there was in here. It was full, I can tell you that. But look, I just had the run of flesh. It's all the way up there. That's all filled up with stacks of 64 run in flesh. But here's the thing. If no pigment spawned right next to the pigment there for a while, and the ones that spawn here were not close enough to get aggro, for a long enough period of time, that pigment right there would have lose its aggro. And then, no pigment could get aggro at all. Because he was the only one that would give aggro to the other ones. Because he's the only one that is named and does not die. By adding a second pigment next to him, since there are two, with the 1.8 mechanic, I hit that one, that one becomes angry. Since that one is angry, it angers that one. And since that one is angry, it angers that one, and it goes on a never-ending loop. Which means that if I hit that one, they will both forever remain mad. No matter how many pigmen are around, if no pigmen spawns for a full minute, it's fine. They will still remain mad, and it will never, ever break the farm. I still don't understand how I died, but I think I have a theory on that. Because, whoops, that's off to find zoom. I saw once a uh, medium slime that was up there managed to s jump on that. And then he jumped on the glass. And then he jumped over here. And he got right next to the track. But then his AI just made him fall off stupidly. Uh, but if a, if a baby slime somehow managed to get on the track every time I passed by he would have hit me. And that's maybe what happened with that. But um, I, I'm walking so carelessly on that ledge with 335 levels. It's crazy. I also did turn off the portal over there. I half slabbed it because I discovered that when I got back to the overworld after using that farm, there were hundreds and hundreds of pigmen around the portal. So by half slabbing the inside and turning the portal off, I don't let pigmen, when I'm up there, spawn in the portal. They can't teleport to the overworld and make me die when I go through on the other side. For the future, all I would have to do is to make a portal that can turn on and off, uh, basically, if I want to go back. But I think I would put the portal up there now that I think of it. Because I'm thinking, if I have an elevator, something to go up. I go up, I use a farm, and I want to go back through, I use a portal right up there. I don't have to risk falling off or anything. So that is cool with that. Let's go back to the overworld again. Uh, what else happened? Oh yeah, winter is coming, guys. I don't know for all of you who are watching, depending on who you, where you are in the world. And what's the temperature? What's the climate in your your country? But for Canadians, the winter is close. And it's noticeable. You can see the temperature dropping every day. And it starts getting colder and colder. Not snow yet. Not yet. Where I live anyways. But I feel like it's going to come soon enough. And that's why I'm wearing my... Winter jacket? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. This is just because I wanted uh, a chest plate and I didn't have any. Let's go back to the um, to the zombie, the zombie spawner, zombie complex, and to go back on the other on the other subject. Uh, I wanted to show you guys a little contraption I made in creative that would be something that you can use 
to cure zombie villagers once you separated them from a zombie spawner. And that's probably what I'm going to put behind this wall. I'm going to lure them with a villager in there. And they're going to fall into my curing chamber. And that's going to be, uh, I think, what I'm going to build to cure them here. This won't be the curing chambers. And I'm going to do them there instead. And then they will all get transported together in a water stream or elevator or something up to the village above. But the design, I experimented with it in creative. I made a video about it even. Pretty cool. And I think I'm going to teleport uh, right there right now to show you uh, how I did it. So be right back. And here we are again in my MDB's concept world. This is the machine I made. It is pretty compact for what it does. I already featured it in the other video, but in case you didn't watch it, I'll explain it real quick. The zombies come into this by a water stream above, like so. They will fall into there, they will fall into there, and they will get pushed right up to the chamber over here. And when they do, the machine will start activating. Since I don't have any zombie spawner rigged up, I have a command block right here that spawns a zombie up there, a zombie villager more specifically, to mimic like you already sort of the zombies villagers and you will send them down here. So let's just activate that a bunch of times. There we go. You can see them coming. And uh, they are gonna, all going to fall. I spawned 10 of them. They are all stuck in that room. Let's see if they all uh, fell. The last one is coming. Seems to be stuck. And he made it. They eventually all fall into that little stream of water where they keep jumping because the water is in their way. There is a villager there. That's the one that lured them down this stream. And this could be done into my world. If I just remove this stream and I make so they fall right into this and then they fall right into there, led by the villager. Or I could just lower this whole section down here and make them fall directly. So it's versatile. Very flexible, how it works. But this is what you can do with it. There is two. There are two buttons, potion and reset. Reset is to fix the machine in case a problem happens. But usually you would press the potion button. Look at that. They all get splashed with weakness effect. And then you come up here. You take your golden apples. And you cure them. You need to hold the button if you're in creative to make sure they all uh, ate an apple. Or if you're in survival, you would have to click repeatedly because if you hold, you will probably eat the apple instead. But the jumping of them is made it so they don't, um, they can all eat the apple in the same way as cow breeders to work when you feed them. You have to make them jump into a water stream so their head pops at different times and you all have the chance to feed every single one of them. Once you did that, they're all going to get cured into that chamber. But you might be thinking, wait, wait, hold on a second. If a villager gets cured in there, wouldn't the other zombies kill it? But the response is no, because they are all against that villager over there. So even if a new villager just pops in the middle of them, they will all be mad at that villager over there. And they won't kill the new villager incoming in the middle of them. You can also hear a cow getting hurt repeatedly. And that's because I have a hostile mob detection system here. Made this uh, with a snow golem shooting a cow repeatedly. Because it's trying to shoot the zombies over there. But it's missing. And it's instead shooting the cow over and over again. The cow goes into a tripwire hook, which made that the machine detects if there are still zombies in there. Once there are no more zombies in there, because all change into villagers, the water will go back in, the block below the water will retract, and all the zombies, newly cured into villagers, will fall down below with the other villagers into this collection chamber. Let's see this in action. They should start curing really soon. 
Come on. I think I'll just wait a little bit until they start getting cured. As you can see, already one of the zombies got cured. There was a villager right in the middle of them, jumping. Oh, now two, three, I think. And they don't even kill them. They should all start transferring really soon. Four more, it seems like. Maybe a little bit more. Oh, another villager just cured. Come on. It takes up to five minutes at max to transform a villager. A uh, villager zombie. The time can be shortened by putting iron bars or a bed around the room. And that's probably um, a good thing to do just if you can. By just putting a few of those blocks around. Just because why not? I did put some iron bars here to maybe help. Some there to maybe help. And I put a bed behind here just in case just in case that would help because because we can I think they all transferred right now let's see if they get dropped like they should it'll take a while the game the machine is detecting that there is no more uh, activation by the tripwire that the cow is jumping into because the snow golem doesn't shoot anymore and Come on. There we go. They all get dropped automatically with the other villagers and the machine gets reset. All automatically. So the only thing you have to do is dropping the zombie villagers down. Splash them. Go up, feed them. And wait. And, of course, stay around so they don't despawn. But that should do the trick for my villager needs. What I like the most about this is that it's slick, it's compact, it's efficient. I can know how many zombies I cure by controlling the amount in the other room. And because I don't need to fill the whole 15 or 13 chambers I have in my world. I can just fill, like, if I wanted just 5 villagers... I could fill up five chambers with the zombie villagers, kill the other zombies, and then send them over here. So, this is very versatile, and yeah, I think this was what I'm going to use. So, the next thing I will have to do is I will have to build this into our world. And that is going to be the complicated part, because it's a pretty complicated build. I consider using Schematica, but I won't use Schematica to um, build it. Because I, want, I don't want it to place automatically the redstone. Because if it places a lever wrong, or a repeater in the wrong direction, or something is misplaced, I will have to inspect over the whole wiring to find what was wrong. So I think I'm just going to use Schematica for the ghost structure image that it gives and place the blocks manually for the wiring part at least because that's going to be the hardest part the chamber can be built pretty easily I think not too much to it just a dropping section and these um these fence gates are there just to prevent that the zombies can somehow glitch and be pushed by another one into the corner like if it goes above the zombie villagers into there and they push him with their hitbox I don't want him to be able to glitch uh, into that block or this block and this also prevents me to fall down because I have a fence gate there and I have a corner of this I know in 1.9 it will be a little bit trickier because the iron iron bars hitbox is only two by two so you could I could actually fall into it but apart from that little detail, I think this is pretty good for what I'm going to need to use it for, at least in this version of the game. So I'm going to build this into my world, I think, um, but not today. 
Not today, because this will be something I'm going to do off camera. Because it will take a, a long time for me to finish this. But once we have this, I will have to do a villager transportation system and all that jazz. But then I think we should be good to go with the iron farm project. So I'll see you guys once again in the other world. But anyways, guys, I think this will do for this episode. This is getting kind of long. Not too long yet. But I get so many episodes I do over 30 minutes, over 40 minutes, and it goes on for forever. I'm trying to shorten my, my time of episodes. Because I'm thinking, these days, who has time to watch a full 35, 40 minutes of video? Almost no one really does, and it's sad, but these days people want something that is quick, that they can just go by and be done with it and go do something else, because the world just passes so fast, life passes fast, um, people have works, people have jobs, people have school, people have university, people have a girlfriend, a boyfriend, people have children, and... Uh, all the busy things that make that playing games isn't the thing that they have the most time of doing, especially not watching others playing games. So I think that we should try to not pass oh, the limit of 30 minutes over an episode anymore, just so they keep on a good time that people have the time to see it. Uh, let's just feed all those cows. I think that's all. It's so buggy in this game. Like, okay, you just feed a cow and then it wants more, but it can't take more because I already fed it. So what's the logic with that? How am I supposed to know if I feed, fed you guys? You're so fat. <laughs> Oh, I have so much leather out of this farm, too. I just go with my flaming fork, just killing all of them here and then. That's the easiest way I can get my steak, my... And all the stuff I get from it. Um, really good. It has looting on it, too. So I don't have food as a problem anymore. Food Gathering food is the thing I like the less in this game anyways. But to close this episode, I think we're going to do one last thing. I think we're going to go on a enchantment craziness. I think we're going to go to enchant. You saw my amount of levels there? You know how many enchanted books I could make with that? Yeah. I think that's what we're going to do. We're just going to make a whole bunch of books. And we're going to enchant them. I already did that one time earlier this week off camera. I could show you the chest I made. It's full of books right now. But the book enchantments we did get... Are not so good. I did get one Infinity One book, but considering the fact that we have a fishing farm that can give us bows all the time, I'm not sure if it's the best thing anymore. Silk Touch is the main thing I'm looking for, but that one is so elusive. Why can I just never get Silk Touch when I want it? <laughs> I I just want one more book so I can make my um my uh, scissors again. But we haven't been lucky with that yet, so I think I'm just going to make a whole bunch of books. They said the chance of getting Silk Touch on a book is about, if I'm not mistaken, 0.1%. But 0.1%, that would mean it's 1 in, wait, no, it's not 0.1%. It's 1% one, 1 one percent chance. So that would be 1 in 100 books, right? Well, I enchanted more than 100 books, and I haven't gotten a Silk Touch book again. So, I don't know what's up with that. I think we should have more chance than that, but that just might just be my really bad luck. Oh, uh, wait, what? We only have 33? That's lame. <laughs> I cannot um, make more because I would have to wait for another full gathering of those. Well, I guess we're going to go with this. <laughs> we're going to go enchant 33. I know it won't be all the levels, but we can enchant more some other time if I'm still alive with these. Man, I can't believe I have 30, 335 levels. I have never seen 
uh, me getting that in no Minecraft whatsoever, modded or single player. I just I never got that. Let's just screenshot our screen right now, just for the kicks of it. We have 335 levels. Screenshot. <laughs> and yeah, I should also maybe do a backup um, of this world soon because I haven't done one in a while. I don't want to lose all this progress, especially not with all the gold we got off of it. Um, since 1.9 has removed the notch apple recipe, I think I'm going to craft a whole bunch of notch apples before updating my world. Because I'm like that. I'm like, hey, something's going to remove from the game. No problem. I'm going to stack up of it and I won't need any more. That's my personality. Let me see. Yeah, you can see I got <laughs> enchantment crazy on these books. That's the best one I got. Efficiency 3, Infinity 1. I got a whole bunch of looting, luck of the sea, protection. Mainly protection and efficiency is the thing I get the most. Sharpness is really good, actually, compared to a bunch of others I got. I also got some Breaking 3, which I'm happy about. But Feather Falling, man. Of all the things that my mind goes about when I'm thinking that should be a really common enchantment... Why feather falling? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, I feel like. But that's the enchantment you can get the easiest. Um, I feel like because I got them so many books of it. We'll put the books in this chest. I think that, yeah, that's the way enough spot. Yeah, let's just make a whole bunch of lapis. I think we have actually enough lapis here to make the enchants. So let's just put a stack in there. And let's go. Looting two, I'll take it. Oh, man, that was a good one. Okay, sharpness three. Good. Flame one. And why do I enchant books? I enchant books because books have the chance of being enchantments for anything. Well, if I enchanted just something specific, I don't think I would have as much versatility with the enchantments I'm getting. Plus, with these amount of levels, what do you have to lose? I have a cow farm. I have sugar cane really easy to gather. I have so much Lapis Azuli and level gathering. Infinity 1. Oh, okay, that's another good one. Knockback 2, Smite 4. Projectile Protection 4. Punch 2. Smite. Oh, so much Smite. Efficiency. Power 4. When is the subclash going to come? It would be so cool if I can get this on camera. Knockback 2. Sharpness 3. Oh, I have no more lapis in there. I was like, wait, what? I ran out of levels? <laughs> Flame 1. Fortune 2, Fire Aspect 1. Protection 3, Power 3. Lure 2. Knockback 2. Flame 1. But the falling four again. Power three. Infinity again. Power three. For the falling four. Yeah. Not gonna happen today. <laughs> Man, I fished a book of that. I fished a silk touch one book. I used it and I lost it. And I cannot, for the life of me, get another one like that. And I'm enchanting this time. I'm enchanting books. Hundreds of them. And I can't get Silk Touch. Okay, I just picked all of them up. Good. I just store all of them. I really need to store all these books somewhere. Because I have way too many of them. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways guys I think that will do it for this episode thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed I hope I gave you some enjoyment for the day a smile on your face uh, some did they make you laugh did they make you smile did they make you happy did they make someone happy did I contribute to something good if so I'm happy because that's all I want I am just trying to make entertaining content for whoever wants to watch it but thank you very much for having stayed with me through this, and I'll see you in the next one. Best of luck.